This is the second part of our uh, one way ANOVA worked example and what we're doing is uh, completing this table here. Now I've got so far where I've filled in the degrees of freedom and I've also got this total sums of squares and in the last presentation I was also able to calculate some important values here the mean and variance for each of the subsamples so uh, the variance of group A it's not very neat here the variance of group A is 2.5 and its mean is 37 the variance of group B is 3.5 and its mean is 39 and so on so we're going to use all these values now in calculating the between group sums of squares and within groups sums of squares sums of squares so they will go in here this is the between group sums of squares this is the within group sums of squares okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to that's from a different presentation uh, between group sums of squares Now this is important so for each item okay for each item so all for an, each individual measurement okay what we're going to do is this calculation subtract the overall mean subtra uh, su subtract the overall mean from the group mean for each item and square the answer okay and then we're going to add up all of these values now the thing about this calculation is that I'm going to just move it into shot here is that there's quite a lot of replicate measurements so that you can actually double up very quickly so uh, let's just have a sort of quick example what I mean so here is the group mean for A 37 and the overall mean here is 36 the group mean for B is 39 and the group the overall mean is again 36 likewise the group mean for C is 34 the group the overall mean is 36 so we subtract the overall mean from each of the group uh, the, 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 the group means and we square it okay now that's the, the 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 basic part of the calculation but what we're going to do is we have to do this for each set, uh, item in each group so there's five items in group A so this this uh, this calculation here up the top is going to be repeated five times so essentially what we could do there is right five times 37 minus 36 squared there are five items in group B so we can do that as well 5 times 39 minus 36 squared and there are 10 items in group C so there are 10 data points and uh, so the the mean of, the, of group C is 36 and the overall mean is uh, 34 and the overall mean is 36 and square that and so on and what we do then is add them all up okay so that's it let's just sort of see how that works again so for each uh, item so we if we have five five items there's five identical measurements so we just like five times or whatever uh, subtract the overall mean from the group mean essentially the group mean minus the overall mean and square the answer okay and add up all of those calculations for all groups for all items okay and again replicate measurements this it's this, the same group mean for a, each item in the in each group so this, the, the group mean is identical for each item in each group small point but important point okay so this is a bit of number crunching so that is 5 times uh, 37 minus 36 squared is 1 well 1 squared but 1 plus 5 times 39 minus 36 squared that's 3 squared and that is equal to well just write it here as 5 times 3 squared and then 10 times 34 minus 36 that is minus 2 squared okay so put the minus 2 in brackets there again so that is I'll just have it done down here and um, 5 plus 5 times 9 plus 10 times 4 and we have 5 plus 45 plus 40 and that is equal to 90 so the between group sums of squares is 90 okay so the next that's that part done we can go to our table now and put that in okay so the answer here is 90 now just as a remark necessarily the answer here is going to be 68 because the SSB 
plus SS within is going to equal SS total. Okay, so the answer ha here has to be 68. But let's prove that. You, you, you might be actually asked to show that um, separately. So what we're going to do here is compute the within groups sums of squares. Okay, so so the calculation is straightforward enough. Uh, the ni minus one and ni is the sample size for each sample. Okay, and what we're going to do is subtract one from it. Okay, and also the variance for each sample, and we calculated that before. Okay, so um, let's just go to our worked example. Let's just see where we are. Gone too far here. So I have it done here. So the sample size for A is 5. Na minus 1 is equal to 4. Okay, so we get this 4 here. The variance we worked out earlier on, okay, was 2.5. Likewise, the sample size for B is 5. So this the Nb minus 1 is also equal to 4 so we get that 4 there as well and the sample size for C my pen is jammed the sample size for C is 10 so uh, 10 minus 1 is uh, f 9 now I'm a bit out of shot here so I'm just going to move this in a bit and my pen is just jammed there so so sorry I'm just going out of shot there for a second and um, Uh, the I didn't didn't realize this was going to go over the side. So NC is equal to ten. NC minus one is equal to nine. So that's the sample size for nine times the variance. Now we worked out these variances in the last uh, present in the last presentation. So it's essentially the standard deviations squared, and the standard deviations are what you're given in the question. So four times two point five that gives us ten. Uh, four times three point five gives us fourteen. 9 times 4.888 that gives us 44 if you have a allowing for a bit of rounding error if you have a number like that and everything else is seems to be working out as an integer just round it up as an integer and so there add them all up and we get an answer of 68 so that is 68 accounted for so great 68 Okay, so now what we have to do is calculate the mean squareds, and we're almost home, and the mean squareds are the equal to the sums of square values divided by degrees of freedom. So this is 90 divided by 2, okay, and that is equal to, and this is 68 divided by 17, okay, so that is equal to 45 and that's going to be equal to 4 okay so uh, this is the f value is the mean squared divided by the other mean squared okay and in this case it is 45 divided by 4 and that is to say uh, what's that 11.25 so that's as far as we're going we've completed the table uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's all the pen and paper work done. Um, you can the the rest of it is now checking the degree, uh, you, you know, whatever you need to do to sort of complete the uh, hypothesis test. Just though, as a remark, if you're doing this as a pen and paper calculation, the degrees of freedom. This is an f random variable. This answer here. Okay, if you're to do this using a pen and paper. Um, Cal uh, calculation. So the critical value is uh, degrees of freedom. Oops, that's not how you spell degrees. Degrees of freedom. There's two degrees of freedom for F distribution. It is 2 and 17. Okay. And you go to your tables. You usually assume the significance level is not 0 0.05. Okay. So the F tables, that's an F um, distribution. I'll just write that up there. Okay, not part of my exercise, but it's still important to know that this is the first degree of freedom, this is the second degree of freedom, okay, when you're calculating your critical value. Righty, that's it.